morning and good evening, dear ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear speakers and participants of today's event. My name is Daskin Koshman. I'm the regional director of Serba uh, Kazakhstan chapter and uh, Kazakhstan Canada Business Council coordinator. So I would like to welcome you to the event presentation of Canadian companies oil and gas for the uh, event which calls Canadian oil and gas capabilities. So uh, today we'll have 10 speakers from Canadian side and a uh, few technical updates. Uh, you will have a chance only to listen and to send your uh, questions and written to, and you will get the answers and written as well. So there is also a uh, translation provided today simultaneous. So please check uh, that option as well on below on your screens. Uh, also, we will provide you uh, with the um, company details in case you will find interesting to cooperate and uh, presentations also will be uh, distributed. Um, the event was organized in cooperation by the Serba, uh, Canada Eurasia Russia Business Association with the support of the Embassy of Canada to Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan and uh, the major support of the organizers uh, from Lincoln Company. And uh, I would like to thank uh, partners and colleagues, uh, Sergei, Nikolai, Zarina for helping us, and uh, Gazi Shotanov and Nathan License from the embassy. And of course, I would like to thank um, my colleague Frank Kenz, Serba uh, Alberta Chapter Regional Director for organizing and helping us. Um, the goal of the event is to show the expertise and advanced technologies of Canadian suppliers for the oil and gas sector of Kazakhstan, as well as to find potential partners. Uh, before uh, we move on, uh, I would like to say a couple of words about Serba. Uh, Serba is the non-profit organization which has six chapters in Canada, uh, another big chapter in Russia, in Kazakhstan, and Uzbekistan. And uh, the main mission of our organization is to promote trade and uh, business relationship between Eurasia and Canada. We have uh, 140 member companies. So uh, if you would like to join us or association, please contact me or my colleagues at uh, there are contacts on our website, serba.org, serbanet.org, sorry. And uh, we'll help you to happy to help you to connect uh, with partners from from the globe, mainly of course from uh, Canada, Russia, or Uzbekistan. So um, now I would like to represent you uh, and introduce you um, the Nathan License. He is the C senior trade commissioner of the Embassy of Canada in Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, and Kyrgyzstan. Nathan, please. Thank you so much, Taskin. Uh, and uh, it's a great pleasure to welcome everyone to our online event today uh, to highlight Canadian capabilities in the oil and gas sector. Um, I would also like to thank uh, all of our partners on the event. Uh, so, so especially uh, Serba, particularly uh, Frank and Taskin, who is our uh, very able moderator today. So thanks again for that. And of course, uh, Lincoln Company, um, especially uh, Nikolai, uh, Sergey, and, and Zarina, and the rest of the team, uh, we very much appreciate your uh, support on this. Um, the last year, I don't need to tell you, has been extremely challenging for everyone, um, but business, even in a pandemic, continues. And I'm encouraged that the price of oil has, uh, has rebounded recently, um, and I believe today sits just under $70. As the world recovers uh, from the pandemic, we can expect economic growth and trade to pick up. And so um, I'm excited that we have a great lineup of Canadian companies to present their solutions today. Uh, these are solutions developed in the Canadian context, but very applicable to, to Kazakhstan. Um, as you may know, the energy sector in Canada employs more than 280,000 people. It accounts for about 11% of Canada's GDP. Uh, about 4% of which is specifically oil and gas production. And in terms of crude oil reserves, Canada has 180 billion barrels. Uh, this is uh, mostly uh, the oil sands deposits in Alberta. And, and these reserves are now third largest in the world behind uh, Venezuela and Saudi Arabia. 
we have a diversified and balanced energy portfolio uh, with great potential for future supply development. Um, as in Canada, the development of the oil and gas industry in Kazakhstan has been key to the country's development. Um, and I know with uh, I note the great success uh, brought to life uh, by uh, Tengi Chef Royal, by the North Caspian Operating Company, the Kerchiganic uh, uh, Petroleum Operating Company, Kazmunai Gas, and many others. And I'm proud of the many Canadian companies, specialists, suppliers, and service providers who helped make uh, Kazakhstan's industry uh, the success that it is today. Canada has always been an important partner for Kazakhstan in the exchange of knowledge, transfer of technology, uh, supply of world-class equipment, and sharing expertise and experience. And as you can see by the, the strength of the Canadian companies that we'll be presenting today, um, we are very interested in continuing to deepen this strategic uh, partnership. And so with that, uh, I would like to close. I want to wish you all great luck in your work. Uh, and I look forward to celebrating the future successes and partnerships uh, with you in the months and years to come. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan. As always, good to see you again. Uh, now I would like to represent another uh, speaker uh, for a greeting, uh, Nurlan Jumagulov, General Director of the Union of Oil Field Service Companies of Kazakhstan, Kaz Service. Nurlan. Nurlan, we're waiting for you. Hello. Включите, uh, пожалуйста, видео. Hello, please turn on the video. Association of oil service companies of Kazakhstan. I'd like to greet all Canadian uh, service companies and also uh, local companies of Kazakhstan. Uh, I represent a station of oil service companies, which unites more than 160 oil service companies of Kazakhstan. Uh, uh, so I'd like just to give a brief uh, introduction of uh, oil service industry of Kazakhstan. Uh, please. Uh, Taskin, please, uh, can I skip uh, one <coughs> uh, representative, please, uh, because I have some uh, bad connections. Uh, sure, I, I, I think so. So uh, we'll just start with the speakers from Canadian side and uh, let us know when you're ready. Okay, thank you very much. Uh -huh, thank you. And uh, yes, now we are going to start uh, speakers with speakers from Canadian side. And uh, I would like to invite Kelly Smith, president of Five Blue Process Equipment. Uh, so uh, Kelly will be speaking about details of the full scope of supply in the design, manufacture, installation, and commissioning of uh, equipment for the processing of oil and natural gas. Okay. Oh, thank you. Good morning. It's uh, evening here. Yeah. Anyway, I excuse. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for taking the time to listen to me. I just wanted to go over some of the things that we do at Five Blue Process Equipment. It's a young company. It's only been around for 11 years, but we're a premier supplier of uh, natural gas processing equipment and some oil equipment. For the most part, our expertise is in natural gas, though. Um, next slide. I don't have control over the slides. Oh, this, okay, I'm looking at different. Stop, go back. Okay, stop. This on the right, upper right-hand side of this uh, table 
is the equipment that we concentrate on in Canada right now, uh, which is primarily removal of H2S and CO2 from natural gas streams, fractionation and stabilizing liquids, hydrocarbon dew point control units, which are typically mechanical refrigeration or uh, Joule Thompson. And then finally, natural gas, which is in the very center, natural gas dehydration using triethylene glycol. The other ones, we supply all the rest of the equipment, but typically only when we do a complete facility. Next slide. Next, there we go. All of our equipment is custom designed, and this is the um, software packages we use from the process simulations using VMG and HISIS, vessel design compress, piping analysis, stress analysis, CSER II, structural S-frame. <clears throat> and all of our drawings are either CAD works plant or AutoCAD. Next. I'm gonna rush through this because there's, I have a lot of slides. Hmm, surprise. This uh, is a photo of a free water knockout that we built for the North American climate. It's basically a 12 foot diameter by 80 foot long vessel. And it's just for separating the water from the uh, oil. And in this case, it's only 10% oil was coming off of this. So they had a lot of water to deal with. Next slide. This is again, a similar vessel, but this is a treater, a conventional treater where you're using heat to break down the, uh, heat up the oil to get the water to cut drop out of it. This skid in Canada, we ship it. It's on a skid 23 feet wide by about 100 feet long. It weighs about 400,000 pounds. Next. This is a uh, condensate stabilization package. It's very common in uh, Alberta right now. It's basically taking in hydrocarbon liquids, either from typically from gas wells where you've got rich streams. And we take the condensate out, we stabilize the condensate and it's shipped from wherever in Alberta to the oil sands. It's used to, it uses a diluent to move the heavy oil down the pipelines. <clears throat> so in the last um, five years, this has been a real push. We build probably five or six of these per year. This is a almost a 6,000 barrel a day facility. Next. This is just a small pump package. So, so we do big stuff and we do little things. This is something we built for a, a client in Egypt. Next. Here, this is a uh, this is part of the fractionation trains that we deal with, and this one was built for progress or for progress energy, but it's actually was it's been purchased by Petronas. So Petronas is putting in uh, two large fields in northern British Columbia, north north of where we are, and it's a uh, a debutinizer package. Next. This is just a very simple separator that we have for oil field installations. Next. And this is, again is a, uh, <clears throat> as I told you before, the stabilizers are very, uh, there's been a lot of demand for them. So this is a, a much smaller one than we saw before. This is only a thousand barrels a day, all designed by us with, in our, uh, all in-house designs, drawings, and, and manufacturing. Next. This is a mechanical refrigeration plant, which we're, we're building a lot of these these days. This particular one is just for hydrocarbon dew point control. So it's to take the, uh, the hydrocarbon liquids out of the gas stream before you put it back into the pipeline. So primarily it's just so that you're not uh, putting liquids into a gas pipeline. Later on, you'll I'll show you some units where they're actually for taking liquids out of the gas stream. It's more of a, they're looking for the liquids recovery. Next page. <coughs> Excuse me. This is 
uh, a mechanical refrigeration plant. Again, this is just for hydrocarbon dew point control. I think on this particular one we had uh, on the, the center um, package there is the compression. There's two 1,750 horsepower electric uh, drivers on brick compressors. Uh, I'm going to just keep going through. There's a whole bunch of slides here. Carry on. Next. This is another separator package that we uh, built for a company in Egypt. So we make it so this was containerized so we can cut down on the overall shipping costs. Again, designed by us. Next. As we can, as you can see, there's so many of the hydrocar the condensate stabilization packages, and they they're all custom designed. Every company here seems to want to be a bit of a designer, so we have to adapt to uh, what their needs are and what their actual flowing conditions of their well would be. Next. This is a facility that I built in a previous company I owned. At this time that we went in and we supplied uh, a package to go in, into it. So we have the, those three towers in front of you are a, a desiccant uh, dehydration unit. So we're drying the gas so that we can get it down to run in that tall tower, which is a, a deethanizer tower a demethanizer tower, which is operating at minus 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So we build new equipment, we go in and we uh, help to do retrofits on existing facilities. So our engineering capabilities allow us to take what's existing and put something into it to, in this case, pull out some, some more liquids out of the gas stream. Next. <coughs> This is that desk, you can see the uh, desiccant plant there that's for drying out the fuel. And then it goes over to the tower, that demethanizer tower, as I said, it's about uh, 105 feet tall. And it's like a three foot bottom section and a five foot top section. And it's um, made of all stainless steel construction. Next. Uh, this is basically going before that um, mole sieve, we actually have to use a triethylene glycol dehydration unit to dry the gas. Otherwise, it, uh, uh, it overloads the mole sieve. So it's a part of the design. It's uh, to take the bulk of the water out before it goes to the mole sieve. Next. There's a mole sieve. Basically, it's a dry desk on the inside of theirs. So one tower will be operating while one of them is heating and the other one's cooling. So next. Again, there's a, the, uh, this is a package showing the uh, stable or the demethanizer tower with the, on the left-hand side is a, a JT, a Jewel Thompson control valve for dropping the temperature down to get it down to the minus 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Next. This is a small facility in uh, northern Alberta. It's just showing what's typically there. And you'll notice there's all there's buildings on everything. We have some fairly chilly weather in Canada. So it's basically the buildings are to protect it from freezing in the wintertime. Next. And that's just um, showing the different components that went into that site. On the left top is the stabilizer package. On the right bottom is a dehydration package. And in the back is a, a, an amine unit for removing, removing CO2 and H2S from the gas stream. It's uh, basically that's just for fuel gas for the, the rest of the facility. <clears throat> Next, please. And this is, this is the amine plant that's on that facility. So you have the tower in the front is the contactor and the one in the back is the stabilizer or the yeah, stabilizer. And it's just a basic amine processing skid. Next. 
this is again at that same site just just some of the other components this is for uh, uh glycol reconcentrating glycol for the uh, refrigerant package this is on that same site as a dehydration unit for taking out uh, taking the water out so we're using triethylene glycol to remove the water from the gas stream next and this is a different style of condensate uh, stabilizer we're using a, a heater style reboiler for the instead of using heat medium that's the big one with the two uh, stacks on the front next this is a, a plant that we just finished doing for conical phillips in northern bc uh, we supplied the amine sweetening unit the hydrocarbon dew point un uh, unit which is the refrigeration plant and again condensate stabilization that's uh, just a photo of the installation next I'm going to go through these quickly. This is basically the picture you saw before. Those are the pieces of equipment that we supplied. So in the front is the refrigeration plant. Or, and uh, pardon me, the sweetening plant, then the refrigeration plant. And on the far side is, again, a condensate stabilization facility. Next. <coughs> And this is this is a piece of that, which is the refrigeration plant that we saw on the front side. Next page. That's the amine sweetening plant. These are for the circulation rate on this. The gas rate was 120 million standard cubic feet a day. So we ship that on a single truck. We take the towers off and it's transportable in Canada. We're running about 20 feet wide by 100 feet long, 22 feet high with the towers taken off. Next. And this is, again, seems boring, but it's been good work. We've we built a lot of these condensate stabilization units. Again, this is in a field where there's a high liquid content on the inlet natural gas. So we're, we're cooling it off prior to this unit dropping the liquids out and then stabilizing them in this package. Next. That's just a, a, a picture of a larger facility that we've just completed for Petronas. They're just doing the startup right now. And again, we're lucky enough to build the sweetening unit, the hydrocarbon uh, dew point unit, and the condensate stabilization. And this plant, they are taking lots of liquids out of the gas stream some of the Motney area of northern BC. Next page. And again, I just I'm just showing what the equipment that we supplied. So it shows without the building so you can see what's inside of there. <clears throat> Next page. This is the uh, amine sweetening facility. We, and it's this one here is for 185 million a day. It's a good size facility by uh, our standards here. Next page. Kelly, I, the, I have to remind you about time. Yeah, that's why I've been hurrying. <laughs> anyway, this is the refrigeration plant that goes along with that. Carry on. Next page. And the condensate stabilizer package. I think we're pretty close to the end. Uh, next page was, yes. Anyway, I rushed through that. This is a lot of pictures. And I thought a lot of times it's easier to visualize what we do if you can actually see the photos or models of what, uh, what we fabricate here. Anyway, thank you very much for your time. I hope that we might be of some use to you in the, going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, just would like to remind to all speakers, we have uh, time limits, so please be precise. And for the attendees, all your questions you can send to the Q&A session uh, bottom here, so you will get direct answers. And uh, 
if you happen to find a partner, so we'll be happy to connect you. So thank you, Kelly, again. Okay. And uh, yeah, I hope that uh, Nurlan, are you are you ready? Yes. Okay. Uh, right. Thank you very much. Once again, I'd like to welcome all Canadian uh, service companies and our Kazakhstan uh, suppliers and uh, clients. Uh, for Canadian companies, I'd like to make uh, just a brief introduction to uh, Kazakhstan oil and gas market and, uh, and oil service market. So uh, in Kazakhstan, we have uh, uh, more than 80 uh, oil producing companies. Uh, you can see the latest uh, data. And for example, last year, uh, procurements of all goods, goods and services amounted uh, up to uh, almost uh, 13 billion US dollars. And so uh, local content uh, uh, was uh, 53%. And if we compare uh, the procurement uh, with uh, 2019, uh, so uh, decline was 30%. So uh, in Kazakhstan, out of 80 oil producing companies, we have uh, three major companies like uh, TCO, KPO, and NCOC. Uh, these uh, three uh, major operators amount uh, for 80% uh, of all uh, procurements in the oil and gas industry. So uh, you can see uh, on the, uh, at the graph, uh, so the first segment, it's a private companies. Uh, Second uh, group is uh, uh, with participation of national uh, company Kazmonegas. And so the third group is uh, operators of uh, major oil fields like NCOC, KPO, TCO. Uh, so this is the basic information uh, about the procurement market. Uh, on the next slide, uh, you may see the key segments of uh, oil service market of Kazakhstan. So uh, we divide major uh, segments of oil, uh, oil, oil uh, service for construction, drilling operations, engineering, maintenance, and geophysical operations. Mainly it's uh, oil field well services. So uh, you may see uh, the payments um, by each year, and for example, we have uh, we can see that uh, decline was done in 2020. Uh, in uh, if you compare with uh, 2019, so uh, at the last column you may see uh, the share of local companies. Uh, so I indicated with uh, red color. Uh, the segments uh, where participation of local companies uh, below 50%. So it's in construction, in engineering and geophysical operations. Uh, why uh, local share is very low at construction and engineering? Uh, the main reason is uh, currently um, uh, future growth project of uh, Tingis oil, fees, oil field is under uh, construction uh, with the budget of 45 billion US dollars and major EPC uh, contracts uh, were given to foreign contractors. That's the main reason uh, of uh, low participation of local companies. So uh, previously I mentioned that uh, the market is divided into three uh, groups. So you can see that uh, all private companies, uh, oil producing companies, uh, according to uh, Kazakh law, they have to procure all goods, works, and services um, at uh, reester.nadlog.kz. So any company can participate uh, by um, through the reg reg registration uh, at this uh, uh, website. So second group is uh, with participation of national company uh, also, any company uh, can uh, bid, uh, can attend the tenders. 
we are re uh, registering uh, at this uh, website. <clears throat> and uh, regarding all uh, major operators like NCUC, QPO, TCO, uh, they have uh, closed tendering procedures uh, and uh, companies uh, can be invited to the tenders only. So uh, you have to go uh, to the websites of these major operators, uh, uh, register at their database and then participate at their tenders. So you know that uh, drilling operation uh, is the heart of all oil field service. This is information uh, for the last nine years, uh, the amount of uh, drilled uh, wells in Kazakhstan. Uh, you can see the graph that uh, uh, wells depend on oil prices uh, due to pandemic, uh, due to uh, low oil prices. Uh, the last year, uh, the number of uh, drilled wells uh, amounted to uh, 807 wells. So uh, the average depth uh, of one well in Kazakhstan is uh, uh, 1,500 meters. So this information is uh, very important for oil service companies, uh, for the suppliers of goods and uh, services for drilling segment. So uh, I understand that uh, major clients uh, for the Canadian or Kazakh uh, or small and medium-sized business, not uh, the operators but uh, they are key major uh, contractors uh, for EPC contracts, engineering, uh, major oil service companies. So this is the list uh, of top 30 uh, oil service uh, companies in Kazakhstan because uh, this is the major clients for many suppliers of goods and services. So uh, you can see uh, the name of the company, uh, the segment of uh, oil service sector and the country of origin. And uh, you can see that out of uh, 30 companies, only um, eight companies uh, with 100% of uh, local uh, shareholders. So you can see the the earnings of the companies uh, in last two years. So uh, I'll just give a brief uh, description uh, how to join Kazakh uh, market. Uh, according to uh, Kazakh legislation, uh, the status of uh, local uh, Kazakh company is given to legal entity uh, which has uh, registered in Kazakhstan and and uh, who attracts at least 95% of uh, local citizens. So uh, if you open a legal entity in Kazakhstan and attract 95% of local citizens, uh, uh, you will have uh, the status of local company and so uh, this uh, status of local company uh, gives you conditional discounts uh, uh, at tendering, but uh, not for uh, uh, operators of Tingis, Kashagan and Karchaganak oil fields. So uh, also uh, major uh, oil and gas Companies, uh, they have obligations uh, in terms of uh, uh, works and services. They have to fulfill at least 50% uh, of uh, local content at works and services. And also we have uh, no, major uh, oil and gas companies. They have obligations to spend 1% uh, of their operational uh, costs to R&D. Uh, at the next slide, uh, this is the list of uh, R&D um, priority sectors uh, where oil producing companies should spend uh, their obligations. 
So uh, annual obligations uh, of oil producing companies amount uh, to 30 million US dollars. And uh, current, uh, currently uh, in Kazakhstan, uh, there is a lack of uh, R&D technologies. Uh, so I would like to welcome all Canadian companies uh, who mainly um, concentrate their business in the following operations. So uh, this is just a short introduction to oil and gas market of Kazakhstan. If you have any specific questions, please feel, feel free to ask. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Nurlan, for the informative presentation. So as we said, we'll share all presentations with speakers and with participants. And uh, now I would like to uh, introduce uh, next uh, um, compression company. So uh, next compression specializes in the, in the design, fabrication, assembly service and retrofit of gas compressor packages. Uh, I would like to invite uh, Andrew Kavana. Andrew? Yeah, um, if someone could start that video, that would be great. Good evening, good morning uh, to my friends in Kazakhstan. Uh, let me introduce you my, uh, to uh, Next Compression. My name is uh, Andrew Kavanaugh, and I am the Vice President of uh, International Sales and Business Development. Um, a, a brief company profile. Um, Next is the combination of two companies, NGC Compression, and Sage Energy International. And um, we came together as Next Compression in April of 2018. That said, uh, we have uh, over 20 years of experience between the two companies, and we are experienced uh, and well-equipped to deliver industry-leading state-of-the-art solutions for your gas compression requirements. And um, we have compression packages in Canada, the United States, South America, Australia, <clears throat> Indonesia, Russia, West Africa. And we work, we operate in extreme climatic conditions, hot, cold weather packages that uh, proven effective to minus 50 to plus 50. Now uh, we operate um, our compression equipment in field gas gathering, Full ga uh, fuel gas boosting, propane refrigeration applications, gas plant process, vapor recovery, flare gas, and more. We specialize in three compression technologies, screw, reciprocating, and vane. And our power range is from 50 to 5,000 horsepower or 37 kilowatts to 3,730 kilowatts. Um, next slide, please. Um, this is um, an overall profile of what we do in rotary screw reciprocating and rotary vein. And as you will see, we have built 643 compressors in the 40 to 200 horsepower, 87 compressors and the 250 to 1450, seven uh, above 1500 horsepower, that's in rotary vein. In reciprocating, um, we have 71 compressors on the 25 to 200 horsepower, 
uh, 116 compressors in the 250 to 2000 horsepower and eight above 200, sorry, 2000 horsepower. Um, and again, um, you know, we in rotary vein, we have 39 between 10 and 550 horsepower packages. And all of this equipment is designed to handle the toughest conditions. Next slide, please. Our experience profile. Uh, we have completed projects domestically in Canada and, and also across the United States. Um, our international profile is growing and, and we see a strong demand, or we're expecting to see a, a strong demand as the, uh, the, the trade and the opportunity start to rise towards the end of this year internationally. Uh, we provide global ser service support and we have a product called OptiFit, which will refurbish equipment anywhere in the world. Essentially what that means is that we will roll onto a site with a fully equipped trailer and we will be able to provide um, a refurbishing capability with a price on site. Overall, we have 1,200 packages globally. Next slide, please. What I'll do here is I'll go through some of these images uh, very quickly, just to give you an overview of the type of equipment that we build. This particular package is, sorry, if you could go back up one. Um, this particular package you will see has dual compressors on the same skid. This was designed for an application in Northern BC. Next slide. Uh, this, this particular package uh, went into Northern BC into Queensland, which is a, a very hostile environment. Um, and it was, um, it was a very tight application. This particular package went into Indonesia. Um, next slide, please. Here you will see where we have electric drive compression and, and a, this particular application went into uh, Africa also. Next slide. Here you will see that this is a multifaceted uh, package that has quite a bit of complexity to it. Um, and we put this application into Russia. Next slide, please. Here you will see that it's an electric driven screw. There's two of them side by side. Both of these units went into Australia, into South Australia, um, into a very hostile environment. Next slide, please. This one here is, um, is a mirror image of the unit that we built uh, for Australia. It's a 2,500 horsepower unit. And this too went into Australia, into uh, Southern Queensland, in the, into the Roma region. Next slide. Here you will see that this is a reciprocating machine and that we have a gas driver and it went into Africa. Next slide, please. <clears throat> this is um, the finished product. This is what we strive for when we build our equipment. We try to make it um, as, as user-friendly as possible. You will see that on this particular skid, it's easy for the operations and maintenance people to step on, step off. There are no trip hazards. Uh, again, this unit went into Australia. Next slide, please. This is just an example of the type of modularization that we're capa capable of. This, this particular unit ended up going into um, Poland. Next slide. And 
As I said at the beginning of this presentation, I would make it brief. Thank you all so very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, next speaker, uh, Miroslav Gozak, partner, Black Powder Solutions, uh, incorporation in the Europe and Central Asia. So Miroslav will be speaking about sustainable solution for filtration and separation of oil and gas. Miroslav. Okay. Uh, can you all can you all see? Uh, is ever? Uh, I can see. I, I I confirm. So I uh, hope that everyone sees that. Okay. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, I'm the partner of a Canadian company, uh, Black Powder Solutions, and I'm in charge for the EU and SNG countries. Uh, here also at the panel is our local uh, oil and gas partner from the company Veredi Navitas. Uh, before I start with the presentation, uh, I would like to quote uh, one very successful inventor and businessman. He said, and he said, if you want to offer something new in the traditional industry where you have for ages installed the technology which works, your technology has to be much better than the one they already have installed. And this is exactly what we did. We construct and produce the magnetic separators uh, with the strength and the power and the effectivity, which are far above the conventional separators. Our patented technology is made a huge step forward in the filtration and separation technology. If you have problems with the particles in the oil, natural gas, vacuum gas oil, amine system, drilling mud, we can solve them or we can significantly improve them. Our separators do not have replacement parts or cartridges. So we can say that we are the most ecological company, separation and filtration uh, company in the world. So uh, before I continue, uh, can you just uh, a second? Can you just uh, put on the video? So, uh, so this is one minute video, which shows how our separation system works. Our separators are used to filter oil, gas, uh, natural gas. Uh, on, on this uh, uh, video, you can see uh, the small transparent separator and it's done transparent. So, you, so we can use gas and you see it instantaneously catches the particles. We use gas because you cannot, you would not be able to see the magnetic, uh, the magnetic rods if we would use the oil or any other fluid. Those magnetic rods are extremely strong. They hold 960 kilograms on one meter of length in a radius of eight centimeters. And these are permanent magnets. These are not electromagnets. This is the automatic cleaning system. We have, uh, we have uh, three types of uh, cleaning systems, uh, manual, automatic, semi-automatic and automatic. Okay. Can I just here? Now I will share the screen and continue with the presentation. Just a second. Is everything okay? You see the presentation? Yes, Miroslav. And just would like to remind you that we're short in time. So uh, ah. please, uh, ah, as, okay. as, as speed as you so, can, thank uh, you. Basically, what is the black powder? Uh, 
These are abrasive and reactive particles which are present in all hydrocarbon fluids and derivates. And uh, these are the product of erosion, corrosion, fractionation, distillation process, and the others. And it usually consists of uh, iron oxide, uh, iron sulfides, calcium, sand, and the other particles, which we call grass, earth. Uh, here you can see the chemical analysis. Uh, oops, sorry. Here you can see the chemical analysis of the uh, of the particles removed from natural gas pipelines, crude oil refinery, and things like this. We have the presentation also in Russian, and you can get it after the after the presentation, so you can see all all the analysis. So our separators. Uh, significantly lowers the exploitation cost. Uh, they they uh, they lower the maintenance cost. Uh, they lower uh, the the the, uh, the the time required for for reconstructions. Uh, and because we do not have any replaceable parts cartridges, we are the most ecological uh, company filtration company basically in the world. We are catching metal and non-metal particles with an efficiency of 95 plus percent with a ratio from smaller than one, uh, uh, smaller than one micron to over 500 microns. Those kind of system, I don't think that it exists. Uh, as I already mentioned, our separators have the enormous strength and uh, one separator rod, two inch separator rod holds 960 kilograms per one meter of length in the radius of eight centimeters, so as you can see here. And they hold 200 times more particles than the regular standard separators and filters. Okay, I will skip uh, so in order to be, save time. So the main advantages of the black powder separators are effectiveness. We can catch the particles smaller than one micron. They don't have the replaceable parts. There is no pressure drops. And because of the enormous strength of the magnetic field and the capacity, they, uh, they reduce the service intervals significantly. They are easy to clean and basically you can see here that to, that you can actually uh, you, you can actually uh, uh, take the particles, bring them to the analysis and you can exactly see what you have in the system and what causes the most of your problems. So you can see here this is a superior economy because here you have uh, you see the 150 standard 10 micron filters compared to one black powder separation unit with a filtration lower than one micron. I mean, the standard filters are changing constantly because they are plugging and going to bypass. BPS separators, it cannot happen with that. In this example, uh, 25 standard filters are changed every seven days and one BPS separator cleans every 560 days. Our separators, catch ferrous and non-ferrous particles. Here you can see the ceramic balls surrounded with the small uh, metal particles and we are catching them. Also the non-metal particles uh, get statically charged and when they get statically charged they are electromagnetic and we can catch them. So this is the chemical analysis in the, in the condensate in the natural gas plant. This is the uh, particles caught in the jet fuel. I already explained that there is uh, three types of systems, uh, automated cleaning, manual cleaning, and semi-automated cleaning. Uh, this is one small test station, test separator, which you can install on bypass of any system. Here, uh, here at the picture, you can see the it's installed on the aiming system. You can install it on the aiming, on the uh, vacuum gas oil, 
uh, feed crude stock to the refinery and everything. Here are just some of our clients. We have hundreds of uh, examples from practice. Uh, here you can see the particles of dirt, we call it black powder, which plugs the heat exchanger before crude distillation unit. We replaced the standard and non-efficient wise trainer. And as you can see here, we are removing 25 kilos of particles weekly on average. Here, you can see uh, the particles accumulated in the refinery slope tank. And there was like from three to 5,000 ppm of iron on 12,000 barrels. And it was unusable in crude unit or coker unless it was blended uh, so you could have uh, so you would have low, uh, uh, lower amount than 200 ppm of iron bps separator pulls out between 130 and 180 kilograms of particles daily this is one of our separators installed on the feed the condensate feedstock on the refinery in south korea the amount of particles you can easily see you can easily see on the on the screen. So we can speed up. This is like a kerosene pump installed. The here is in, in installation on the solitaire system, and basically 1.8 million dollars of saving yearly. We succeeded to achieve with this company. This is one natural gas facility. You can basically see that these particles were plugging the defined filters which they had. This is on the water heating loop system. Miroslav, yeah. we have to complete. Ah, okay. Apologies. So, uh, just uh, ju just before uh, just before I finish the closing word, uh, we opened the local production of the housings in Kazakhstan for the smaller separators that which are used for mining industry. Uh, we are still also uh, also all the separators that will be installed in that are and will be installed in Kazakh uh, companies will be built locally. Only the magnetic rods are built in Canada and delivered to to Kazakhstan. So thank you all for your attention. I'm sorry that I didn't have more time because I have like more than 30 other examples for and I have both presentation in Russian and in English, so I can share it with you. I do speak Russian, but I, it's easier for me to do it in English now. Thank you, Miroslav. Uh, yes, apologies for, for yeah, speeding you and uh, pushing you, but uh, unfortunately, we're running out of time. And thanks to all Canadian speakers, because it's very late, almost 1 in the morning, 1 a.m. So uh, I would like to invite next speaker, um, Ben Robinson, Production Director of Cartio Inc. Uh, he will be speaking about new approaches to the operational reliability of wells, integration of artificial intelligence and cloud computing. Hey guys, uh, this is actually uh, Nick Boots here. I'm, I'm, I'm presenting instead of Ben here. Uh, Доброе утро. Я по-русски тоже могу говорить, так что, пожалуйста, задавайте вопросы или по-русски, или по-английски. I can speak uh, Russian, so you can ask your questions in Russian or English. Second. All right. So, so our, our company is called Cargeo. We've been around for about 10 years now, and we're based here in Calgary, Canada. Uh, we are purely a software company, and uh, and we, uh, we, we specialize in visualization, digitization, and analysis of data that comes from downhole tools. So multi-finger calipers, uh, electromagnetic tools, ultrasonic tools, uh, we take the data from these tools, raw data, and then basically create 2D, 3D images uh, to tell people what their wells look like. So if there's corrosion or deformation, our software, can find that out. And our specialists who are also working here in Calgary can, can do the data analysis from anywhere in the world. Uh, so here are some of our clients. 
So we um, we work together with Schlumberger, Baker Hughes. Um, you know, part of our shares is owned by General Electric. We're we we actually uh, have a small operation with uh, KPO Car Chiganug, um, and uh, also we we're we're quite famous for donating a lot of our software to universities. So uh, Europe, um, you know, Central Asia. America, a lot of universities are using our software to teach their students uh, how to analyze wells. Uh, so why why we do this is, of course, you know, if you have a good well, you're producing at the highest level. Uh, you also there's no risk to environment, and uh, you know, in the end of the day, uh, the the profits are increased. So what does it look like? Um, so. Quite simple. So we start with something like this raw data from the field comes in LAS file. Uh, we put it into our software within seconds. Uh, it comes out as 2D, 3D images of your well casing. So depending what kind of tool you're using, let's say if it's a caliper, that's an inside well. If you're using electromagnetic tools, we can do two strings, sometimes up to three strings. Again, depending what kind of tools a service company is using. Uh, and then from there, you can kind of uh, do remediation action. So are you gonna fix the well? Are you gonna keep running it? Do you see any perforation zones? Uh, you know, it's really up to the operator at that point, but we, we give a full report. Uh, this is just a, a case study of what the software looks like right now. Um, it's, this is a cross section. You can see like a cut through version of the software. Uh, Here's uh, one of our kind of crown jewels is uh, we, we're, we exceeded in our 3D imaging of the wells casing. So uh, we'd like to think we have one of the most detailed 3D imaging of, of the well um, based on the data that we get. So you can see here is a, an actual 3D image uh, based on caliper data. Uh, you can also see the outer wall at the same time. You can even print it on the 3D printer. Uh, just to bring it to the meeting and whatnot. Um, this is the final report that the software generates. So um, just to give you an example, our competitors usually create a report for uh, anywhere from one day to uh, two days. That's how long it usually takes. Our software is so efficient that it takes about uh, 30 minutes to one hour. So you can get a full report back within an hour. This is uh, probably the one of the fastest uh, operating software in this niche market out there. Um, we also have a very powerful drift analysis. So not only can we tell if the well is corroded or deformed, we can also tell what kind of tool can pass through that casing without getting stuck. And uh, as you can see, our major development here is the knuckle joints. So we, we count for all the different joints within the BHA, which is the borehole assembly. So it kind of, it kind of the software replicates it as if a, a snake is going down the deformed casing, which is actually what happens in real life. So it gives you very, very precise measurement. Um, where are we going forward? And this is something that we wanted to briefly touch on. Uh, we soon should be the first company uh, as far as I know, in the world that offers this kind of service uh, through cloud. So we are, uh, we just had a, a deal with Am Amazon and uh, we're currently trying to uh, go um, from a, you know, a licensing model to pay as you go. So you don't have to buy the software licenses anymore, yearly or perpetual. You can just pay every time you use, uh, you use a software to analyze a well, for example. This is a, uh, uh, this is going to be a major uh, money saver for a lot of servicing companies. So this is something uh, quite new to the market. Uh, we're also implementing AI capabilities to the software. So right now, you need a log analyst to analyze a well. Uh, we want to build um, a AI system that bases its assessment on statistical data and will actually give you a statistical uh, estimates of what's happening in the well. And then the log analyst kind of becomes like a reviewer rather than, you know, um, a full log analyst. It will, again, save a lot of time and give more probability. Uh, also predicting and prescribing capabilities. So based on historical data of your well, the software can predict what it's going to be looking like in two, five years from now on based on historical data. And this is also something that we're 
currently adding to the software. Um, and we, you know, and this is, uh, please um, go to our website, see kind of what, what products we have. I couldn't touch on all of them today, but we also have DTS data visualization software, um, some land calculation softwares. There's a few um, that, you know, we, we, the time is short today to describe, but um, we're, we have quite an extensive package of softwares. But of course, our flagship software is the, the casing analysis software that I just uh, presented to you guys. So with that, I, uh, I'll conclude my presentation. Uh, you know, uh, we will share this presentation with you guys. There's an email and direct phone number. So please contact us. We'll be very happy to answer all of your questions and you can do it in Russian or English. Um, it's, it's, it's up to you guys. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Nick. And uh, Miroslav, could you please turn off your turn on your off your video and audio? Um, huh. so the next speaker uh, is Evgeny Polishevsky, CIS Business Development Manager, Sprung Instant Structures. Uh, so, Evgeny. Добрый день, уважаемые дамы и господа. Меня зовут Полишевский Евгений. Я представляю канадскую компанию. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm presenting Sprung. Constructions, Sprung Instant Structures. I'm manager for business development in the CIS countries. It is my immense pleasure to be here, to be granted this opportunity to present our company's products. Here's our presentation. Thanks to the high quality of our products and their reliability, our company is considered to be one of the leading suppliers in the oil and gas sector. Our company is a pioneer and a leading company in producing portable buildings using cutting-edge engineering technology. Spran is a private company, a family-owned business established in 1887 by Philip Don Spran. Now it is managed by the fourth generation of the Spran family. At early 20th century, the company was producing mattresses and tents. In 1981, it started producing portable buildings as the oil and gas sector in Canada had a demand for those buildings, especially heavy duty ones. At the moment, our company is an international company with offices in Canada and USA. Here you can see them on the pictures. Those for the head offices and as for other, the other offices, we also have them in the UK. Our capacity is allows us to store more than a 180,000 square meters of our products. We produce uh, portable tent-like constructions that are based on aluminum arches and special membranes. Our products are heavy duty. The arches are made of an aluminum alloy and we provide a 50-year warranty for those. We have a special horizontal elements that provide for ruggedness. No welding is required to assemble our units. 
our units comply with all the standards for precipitation loadings. Here you see the insulation we use. So it is made of aluminium, this unit, and inside it we put glass fiber. And then this unit is put between the internal and external membranes. And the membranes are used as an additional waterproof barrier. We also use thermal, thermal plastic rubber, which allows for additional water tightness. The membrane is pre-tensioned, which means that which provides for greater durability. Our units are energy efficient and comply with all fire and safety standards. Here you can see our, our typical units, their measurements, dimensions. So our units can have any length because you can just adjust, attach one unit to another. The roof angle is 26 degrees which is the best in terms of wind and also provides for uh, self-cleaning of snow. Here you see the BREAM certificate our products received, a four-star one. BREAM assesses uh, how green and energy efficient your product is and these certificates allow for receiving special preferences and perks so the unit width is 9 to 61 meters assembly this assembly is of deployment the model configuration we use allows to increase the area through increasing the lengths. No basement is required unless the width is more than 40 meters. Snow gets self-cleaned from the roof have seismic durability, maintenance costs are minimal, the insulation package is 20 centimeter deep, our units are watertight, we provide a 50-year warranty for our aluminium parts and 25 year one uh, pre-rate 25 year pre-rate warranty for our reinforced membrane of the Tedlar type and now for the application of our products you see that they can be used for warehouses, workshops, production facilities, storage units, training facilities, field camps, offices, canteens, gyms, pools. Uh, 
the design we use allows for transportation without disassembly. Here our partners. And here you see our projects in the Republic of Kazakhstan. So Tengish Royal is a special list in our reference. We have provided this in uh, 1997 and it still exists. Uh, from 2016 to 2019, we've worked at the future growth at Tengiz, and we have supplied 15 structures such as offices, warehouses, garage, and uh, checkpoints. So these are photos from that side of Tengiz, TCO warehouse. Material control control office. At the end, we'd like to mention our other projects in Kazakhstan: aviation hangars, hangar in Atirau, 36 by 36, and uh, two um, bird farms in Shimkent, and swimming pool for U.S. Embassy in Astana and Nur Sultan. Also, we provided some project for Rosneft in CIS in Russia, also with Baker Hughes and Schlumberger. This is the reference letter from Schlumberger from the Verkhnichonsk oil and gas field. There is a minus 50, but it's very warm inside for Rosneft at Sakhalin uh, project. In case if you'll be interested in our products, please contact us by these uh, numbers. I hope for your cooperation and thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, Evgeny. Uh, uh, yes, and if I may ask uh, next speakers to speak a bit louder, uh, would be great. So next uh, speaker, Murat Urakov, Senior Geophysics, Geof uh, Phoenix Geophysics Ltd, MTZ in the oil and gas industry. Murat. Can you hear me well? So I will now start my presentation with Murat Urakov from Phoenix Geophysics, application of a magnetotelluric MT technique in oil and gas industry logging and surveying. Magnetotelluric exploration technology is quite uh, well known and in uh, the seismic is a standard tool, but uh, lately, due to the increase of difficulties for seismic exploration, the magnetotelluric technology is uh, starting to be more and more pressing. Not always uh, seismic can be used due to certain conditions, uh, which may uh, make it prohibitively uh, expensive or too difficult with uh, basalt uh, structures. That uh, allows us to use uh, the MT and get a lot of additional data for exploration. For the latest decades, magnetotellurics has uh, made a breakthrough. If in 1980s, a magnetotelluric station was uh, carried on a track, now the same uh, amount could be stored in a 20 by 10 centimeters and weigh just five kilos. If the processing of data in 1980s uh, would take the whole winter after going back from the fields. And now, uh, and that required also a, a big computation center. 
now this amount of information could be processed in 10-15 minutes and interpretation could be done at a small laptop within several days. I'm not going to dwell on theory. I will focus on our equipment, MT equipment, which is manufactured by Phoenix Geophysics. These are the new generation series, five channel receivers, eight channel receivers, six uh, magnetic, two electric channels. All these uh, devices is a new generation. They have a built-in display, which during the recording displays various parameters. These are technical details. Some of the technical parameters, the number of channels, the uh, maximum power consumption and DPS. You can see our new revolutionary product, ultra wide band induction sensors, which are used to measure magnetic uh, components of the electromagnetic field. Because uh, MT traditionally was uh, using AMT and MT bands. As these uh, new magnetic sensors uh, have been on the market, this uh, conventional separation has been surpassed. And uh, there is no need to change the, the sensors and to measure, uh, measure them consecutively, but you can measure all these parameters simultaneously and install them once. So this is used to measure electric component. This electrode doesn't require uh, any maintenance or support. It works in quite a wide temperature range and has very good technical characteristics, low noise level. Here I'd like to show you the climatic uh, range where our equipment works. Although we provide in our technical specification that it's from minus 20 to plus 50, uh, but actually I have dissipated in, in conditions where it was minus 52 up to plus 56 in Africa. You can see at the lower uh, picture how our uh, Equipment was work in Antarctic, Antarctic, and in uh, Nevada uh, desert. And how our system is uh, tested in a fridge chamber and underwater. All our equipment um, undergoes the full cycle of tests. Uh, the breakthrough is that uh, this. Uh, devices have telemetric capabilities, telemetric measurement. You can uh, you can connect to this to the network and have remote access to this uh, equipment. You can download it from anywhere in the world and it's very good for measurement. Technically, this is the curve uh, of the testing uh, of 23 days and we have reached the twenty thirty thousand sec seconds which means 350 400 kilometers and of course that, that's uh, not the industrial uh, sensor but this shows a very traditional curve it's reliable trustworthy it shows uh, as uh, points, but uh, zone uh, curve is shown here as well. 
Together with our equipment, we have uh, made Empower, which is a new software package used for our equipment to manage the entire database. And this uh, software package allows within one project to process up to 3000 points with uh, the information amount talking about hundreds of gigabytes. That's what I wanted to share briefly about our equipment for exploration. And I hope this information will be useful and interesting for our Kazakh partners. And don't forget that one of the largest Uringoy uh, gas deposits, I was gas fields, was discovered using this method. I've tried to to be very quick, not to uh, to over overload you with too much scientific data. Thank you, Murat, Andrei Baguzov. Здравствуйте, как слышно меня? Хорошо. Hello, can you hear me well? Значит, я хотел бы представить компанию RST Instruments. RST Instruments is in Maple Ridge, uh, BC founded in 1927. RST Instruments, in addition to Canadian plan, has rep offices in UK, Sopofer, and it's the world leader in developing industry. I will uh, show things and comment. So it's the world leader in uh, structural geotechnical equipment, trying to provide reliable equipment and uh, the data collection equipment for the safety of uh, structures, which requires monitoring and measurement at uh, dams, tunnels, mines, uh, bridges, and uh, various infrastructure. RST instruments support the quality management system, which is based on ISO 9001-2015. And our employees provide high quality at all levels. Talking about geotechnical devices, you can see them on the screen on this picture. The plant is located at the 500 square meters uh, location. It includes the newest technologies. It's programmable uh, machines providing for high quality at the affordable price and timely delivery. Also, there is a electronic lab for engineering, research, and uh, other departments and specialized assembly lines. The RST instruments are available throughout the world with the support provided. We provide equipment for the mining uh, industry, Aslor Metal, Glencore, Kazakh Myths, Kaz Minerals, and uh, Metropolitan of Almaty, the Almaty subway. It has a certificate from Kazakhstan for the measurement, and it's uh, allowed for the operations. That's it from me. Thank you, so thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Andre, for this short informative presentation. You've saved us. Um, Yuri Tarasov. We'll be very grateful to you.
Видно ли мою презентацию? Да. Can you see my slides? Yes, we can. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you for finding the time for this conference. I will try to be as brief as possible, and I'll try not to dwell on details, make it layperson friendly. So, Canadian technology for roads. Dust suppression without using expensive materials. Represent Cypher environmental. Cypher environmental produces concentrates for dust suppression and soil reinforcement. Has been producing those for 20 years. Our products are used all over the world by mining industry, mining oil and gas industries. So what is the traditional idea of the road? Why are we talking about roads? The reason is because, well, you can have any mines or anything, any equipment you want, you want, but if your roads are bad, you just won't be able to get there. And usually roads are expensive to, or difficult to build. They require a lot of sand and other materials, and they take a lot of time to build, and then you have high maintenance costs because they tend to degrade with time. And whenever you get rain or bad weather, it results in the deterioration of your road, and then with time you will have potholes and ruts, which will affect both the status of your vehicles and will result in longer times required to get to your destination. So we have some solutions to those problems. And our solutions don't require anything like sand or anything like that. And they can be used whenever you, wherever you want them to be used. And we have dust stop, a dust suppression solution, which also stabilizes soil. And if you have a lot of clay in your soil, then we suggest and recommend you use earth zyme. Because usually if you have a lot of clay in your soil and then your vehicle go along the soil, especially after rain, then it gets extremely difficult to get to a destination. So, there are many companies that they try to address the issue of bad roads. And like many companies, we receive funding from the government. We work with many universities, think tanks, other organizations that enable us to do a lot of research and we also have students take part in the development of our concentrates. They work in their labs with different soils, with different concentrations. And 
then it results in uh, us having a big database for soil analysis. Basically, it means that we can take a look at your soil and then tell you what you need in order to get the results you want, be it soil suppression or obtaining the surface, the road surface you need. Here's a short video showing how we work. So we uh, pr prepare our concentrate, put it in water, then we water the soil, mix it, level it, As a result, we have a firm road surface that will last for years, will require little to no maintenance. Here's another video, one of the roads we built, here you will see a vehicle that drives along our road and then it will pull into another road and you will see that there's a lot of dust. To make roads like that, we use the Earthzyme concentrate. It's non-toxic, 100% biodegradable, environmentally friendly, like all of our products. We use this concentrate, one liter per 160 to 200 square meters of road surface. And usually we need to get it to a depth of 15 to 12 centimeters. Usually 15 is enough, but if you want it to be more heavy duty, then 20 centimeters is recommended. As, you say, as I said, it reacts with clay in the soil. H how do you decide on which concentrate to use? Well, for that, we can do special analysis to see what kind of soil you have. And then we'll advise you on which one to use. If this is clay, then it's a dime. It is applied only once for a several years long effect. Here you can see how firm our roads are. So this is just soil with our concentrate and you here you see that it's extremely firm. The application of our concentrates leads to less potholes, ruts, fewer potholes, ruts, and the road will become more smooth and you won't have to do any grading even after rain. Maintenance is usually required once a year or once in two years. And what you do is just use a grading unit to go along the road. 
and that's it and at times even that is unnecessary so the key thing here is that you use the existing soil very you don't really need expensive materials no special equipment just like you see saw in the video you only need one vehicle one unit that applies the concentrate to the soil which results in your costs decreasing and you getting good roads at your on your sites and here this picture shows the way our road looks after five years of use it's been graded twice in five years. Uh, yeah. You can see a, a piece, a sample of that road. We had used a special diamond based cutter. And with time, our roads are only getting better, tighter. And I'd like to say a few words about the other concentrate. It is mainly used for dust suppression, but also will also provide you with firm surface before, after. So you see how beautiful the roads we built are, and we only use the materials that are located on your site. Our roads are heavy duty, so used everywhere in most severe weather conditions. And you can use our concentrates for any kinds of roads, so car roads, freight roads, auxiliary access, bypass, query roads. anything and our concentrates are also used for construction and production sites car parks walking paths runways and helipads we have a Boeing uh, safety certificate and another way you can use our concentrates is for erosion control we work all over the world and here you can see some of our clients. We work in Russia, in Kazakhstan. Last year we worked with Kazakhstan gas, oil and gas sector, mining sector, our head offices in Canada, but we also have offices in Russia and Kazakhstan. I will answer any of your questions, call us, write us in English, in Russian, whichever you like. Thank you. So we have our last speaker, uh, Konstantin Shepilevich. Unfortunately, Maria Kucherenko won't be able to join us today, but her presentation will be sent out to uh, all participants. So thank you, Yuri, once again. And now Konstantin Shepilevich, uh, Thermo Design Engineering Project Director. Uh, 
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Konstantin Shapilevich, and I'm project director of a Canadian company, Thermo Design Engineering, based in Edmonton, which uh, designs and manufactures equipment for uh, oil and gas industry. Uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you very much to the, all the organizers of this event and participants for opportunity to present our company. Thank you so much. Um, I'd like to do a, a brief presentation of Thermo Design Engineering, or TDE in short. And uh, for clients' convenience, for our local company's convenience, I'm going to switch to Russian now. Thank you. Добрый день, уважаемые господа и дамы. Hello, dear gentlemen and ladies. A brief presentation on Thermo Design Engineering. The company, which is based at Edmonton in Alberta, in Canada. Our company provides uh, the services for oil and gas industries, comprehensive services. I'd like to talk about the strategy, uh, main information, principles, our competence and the referenced questions and i will provide this presentation on the pdf with information on our fulfilled projects and if you'll be interested you can always look up what what we have done so here there'll be a, a, a list of projects which were done in CIS countries. Our strategy is based on uh, being a preferred supplier for the safe, innovative industrial solutions for energy complex. TDE has been founded in 1979, and uh, we focus on the oil and gas industry. We provide the comprehensive services. We are ISO certified. We have 450 employees and 50 workers who are working at the sites. We have large uh, sites of 55 acres, 25 acres uh, in the Edmonton and the headquarters and in other areas of Northern America and Middle East countries. Uh, we have participated for the last 40 years in more than 300 gas and oil processing plants. We can talk about the key values and uh, that we provide a full spectrum of uh, services. We have a multi-profile engineering team and we work throughout the world. We are experts in module equipment uh, design. We, are, we have been pioneers uh, 40 years ago, more than 42 years ago. And we're still very successful implementing this in, in practice in most countries of the world. And we provide also the production services because we manufacture our equipment ourselves. So our approach is based on supporting the relationship with our partners, with our customers and suppliers. We are uh, safety and quality oriented. We are providing continuous improvement. And we will talk about the competences of our company, which is very wide. So we are value oriented for the reliability, uh, 
quality, safety, interoperability, uh, the labor ethics and innovations, the support of relationship approach. Uh, we are customer oriented and we always support relationship as a very reliable and business oriented partner. We always help our partners, our customers during the design phase, talking of what the, the customer wants to build. Also during the transportation phase and installation, whether it's done by the our company or by the transporting company. We also support during the construction of the site, during the installation phase, during the 72 hour pilot phase and uh, during the testing stage and uh, providing support throughout the entire uh, operation phase. Uh, we uh, have standard and unique uh, solutions. We are quite flexible and we are delivering on our promises, as I have said. Briefly, we are OXAS certified. We are members of a local and industry associations. We confirm with North American standards. And we are Russian GOST certified. And uh, on numerous occasions, our equipment has been certified for the uh, custom union standards. Talking about uh, the full scale solutions, we provide engineering and design procurement project management, manufacturing, construction services, uh, installation, training, and uh, services provided at the construction site. Services, so we are quite um, experienced. And we provide also for continuous improvement cycle uh, analysis and understanding, modeling and planning, uh, decisive actions, and studying quality and quantitative data and reports. So we provide for strategic planning and the quality control, uh, the safety management. We are concentrated on the delivering our promises on uh, supplies, on shipments, technical design standards. So this is a list of projects where we work, including Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, Russia. The headquarters are at Edmonton. What kind of professional services we provide? Within our company, we can do design and we have engineering disciplines of all the necessary components. So it's the, uh, the technological processes, design, process design, uh, the process safety, mechanic design, uh, the pipeline design that is all done inside of our company. Talking about design, these types of uh, the conceptual uh, project development, the feasibility study, and very often the customers that they approach us, they say that we have gas or we have oil and uh, we we cannot uh, make even the uh, terms of reference could you help us so we provide such such services too uh, we provide for the preliminary for the preliminary 
consulting for the feasibility study and uh, for all the detailed engineering and uh, other solutions talking about design standards we have more than 50 engineering specifications and that list is always growing including uh, safety earthwork electrotechnic systems control systems uh, metal structures so our experience allows us to tackle with all these areas the module uh, manufacturing when we started this 42 years ago that was a novelty but the convenience and uh, saving uh, the funds and improving quality it hasn't changed all this uh, positive uh, sides are still there we can uh, assemble at the uh, shortest time possible so we do pre preliminary uh, initial installation the components are pre-manufactured in, in at our site so we are saving both funds and time we are shortening the time of installation areas of expertise uh, first of all, it's the gas processing. We do everything which exists for gas processing. That's uh, our uh, key area of expertise. So it's the uh, fractionation of liquids, recovery of LPG, uh, gas desulfurization, dehydration, and drying, compression, sour gas injection in the reservoir the angel extraction uh, mechanic refrigeration the uh, ngl instruction the separation and filtration pipeline systems sulfur recovery and anything which you can see on that picture you can design as for um, oil processing it's the light and heavy oil preparation separators vertical and horizontal the conventional and of high efficiency uh, plants processing uh, the heater treaters mechanic electrostatic uh, technological and uh, auxiliary heating the according to direct heating, uh, API 560, vertical cylindrical type, cabin type, a project for look oil with the heating of oil emulsion. There are three uh, towers, uh, regenerators, reboilers, and indirect type glycol water bath and linear heaters, we designed them. Here, for the offshore um, businesses, we, we provide uh, processing equipment for stationary and semi-submersible platforms. Production services, I will just touch on, upon it briefly. We have a lot of uh, production sites at Edmonton and several locations and then the production site near to the headquarters office of our company we provide for the terms of reference for more than um, 40 welding procedures and we have like 300 welding generators welding uh, installations welding machines 20 working generators our production capabilities are the pressure vessels heat exchangers pipelines metal structures 
um, the isolation, direction of scaffolding, non-destructive control, uh, the modular design. So everything which is needed to assemble the equipment, to test it, and to load it for shipment, that we can all do at our production sites. The pressure vessels up to six meters in diameter, up to 20 centimeters of uh, thickness, and uh, we can use uh, stainless steel and harder uh, carbonous steel. We, we manufacture according to ASME standard all these vessels to be supplied to CIS countries, customer countries. We can do the uh, passports accordingly with the translation into Russian. Separators, filters, columns. Those we have all covered. Here we have heat exchangers, ASME standards, standard compliant ones, and now for on site services. Once again, it depends on the country you are in, on your needs. We could just provide guidance. So, for instance, our client contracts several companies, and then we provide oversight and guidance. Preparing units for commissioning, or we could do it as a bundled package. So you just contract us, and then we find all the necessary specialists and companies, or we could use in conjunction with an EPC company. It's up to you. We provide training. The best practice is to do it in early, in the early stages for the people to be able to see everything, how everything is done, what kind of equipment you use. and get a detailed understanding of how a certain equipment works. We also usually provide additional training to them, lasting a, a week long course, and this is where we wrap it up, the training part. We can also help you enhance your capacity, give you advice on the best way to do it. CapEx, OPEX, everything. Feasibility studies, spare parts, systems in commissioning, and general guidance. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the presentation of Maria will be sent to all participants. And uh, now uh, I think uh, the time to summarize and conclude our event. And I would like to thank all speakers for uh, staying with us so late because it's been very morning, early morning in Canada, and for the comprehensive and informative uh, presentations with a range of uh, services and uh, uh, progressive products and equipment um, 
you presented at your presentations. And also I would like to thank all organizers of the event and participants for your interest to our event. And as we said, uh, all participants will be receiving, will receive all these presentations. And please contact us organizers if you haven't uh, heard any feedback from the speakers. So we'll be happy to connect you uh, with speakers and share uh, contact information. And we're looking uh, forward for feedback and for a, a potential business partnership and uh, for further cooperation. Uh, also uh, taking this opportunity, I would like to invite all Kazakh and Canadian participants to join our association and we'll be happy to connect you uh, with the uh, businesses uh, in not only in energy um, uh, field, so, and uh, in other industries as well. And you can contact me at uh, uh, email taskin at serbanet.org. Um, so uh, thank you all and hope to see you soon at our future events and please stay healthy and safe.